Empower the use of open source with software composition analysis from Revenera. Hello, and welcome to another software composition analysis podcast from Revenera. In this episode, we're going to talk about the very recent vulnerability in the Apache Log4j project called Log4Shell. We'll discuss what it is, what's happened to date, and what you and your team should be doing about it. With me today, I've got Alex Ryback, uh, Director of Product Management at Revenera, and Naraj Talker, Product Security Engineer at Flexa, Flexera. Excuse me. Welcome, gentlemen, both of you today. Good to be here. Great. Thank, thank you, you very much, Kendra. Good. Nice, welcome, nice to be here. Yep. Welcome. Thank you, Naraj. All right. So from what I understand, what I've read, and there's a lot out there about this one already, this is a doozy. So um, Alex, can you tell us a little bit about what is Log4j? Yeah, it, it's been a, a long weekend for lots of folks. So uh, so yeah, so, so Log4j is um, unfortunately a very popular framework that uh, has uh, an exploit that's been discovered, right? So it's used uh, by Java developers predominantly. Uh, it's uh, very popular and has been ported into many other languages. So there's a version of it for Perl, for PHP, for .NET, for R. Um, and it is also incorporated into many Java frameworks. So things like Struts and Solar and uh, Elasticsearch and Apache Flink. So there's lots of technologies that are very commonly used, which means that it is fairly pervasive. It's out there. It's in a lot of different projects. So if you are using, you know, building any sort of Java application or utilizing any of these frameworks, uh, chances are you have an exposure to it. So the uh, reason we're here is to talk about it and give people some ideas on uh, what, to get, what to do from here. Okay, very good. So, Naraj, what happened? <laughs> in the very, within the last few days, literally, what happened? Uh, you know, I, I can start off with, uh, you know, talking about the CV. I can start off with talking about the vulnerability. However, you know, uh, what made Alex mention the uh, Log4j as the unfortunate framework is the vulnerability, you know. People were having it uh, call, as a, call as a fortunate framework because it was really helping the developers a lot. Okay, however, we are calling it as an unfortunate framework because it is very common nowadays. Okay, and most of the products are using it. But uh, recently over this weekend, the weekend has been very wonderful for us. And we have, uh, you know, we have got a new vulnerability with the CV 2021-44228, uh, which is about the uh, Log4j. And the vulnerability that we are talking about, you know, this basic is, uh, this basically issue, the vulnerability is based on the improper input validation. Okay. And uh, the Log4j uh, vulnerability uh, is part of the Apache and the Java platform both. Okay. And uh, the improper input validation uh, in, in this particular, uh, in this particular logging framework is what leading to the remote exploitation or the remote code execution uh, of many commands or many, many kind of, uh, you know, lookups that can be uh, done using the GNDI uh, feature, which is provided by log4j. Okay. So uh, what, what this uh, particular uh, vulnerability all about is, you know, the log4j lookup feature provides you, uh, you know, a way to add values to the log4j configuration. Okay. And uh, as soon as you uh, give that particular, uh, uh, give that particular lookup value, that will go to your log4j configuration. And once it is uh, parsed, uh, after the parsing of it, that particular lookup value will be uh, tried to resolve from the uh, log4j framework side of it. And then whatever it is, it, it might be any malicious uh, code base, it might be any malicious uh, malware, anything, it could be anything which the client or the, uh, you know, uh, the adversary has put in place. And once uh, the lookup or the uh, uh, once the lookup is done from the uh, log4j uh, server side of it, that is pretty much it. You're you're uh, vulnerable to it. You're 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 breached, or maybe uh, they might be able to do uh, remote code execution using that. So these are some of the things which are uh, you know primarily happening because of the log4j, and uh, this is also you know uh, similar to uh, you know the uh, format strings vulnerability, which came up for uh, uh, Equifax, or there are similar kind of vulnerabilities also, which came up. So this is also in the same lines of it. However, there are many speculations in the market and there are so many uh, inhibitions going on, on in and around this. We are, we are still trying to find out more information on this 
and I, I hope I hopefully think that there are uh, plenty of uh, blogs or plenty of information which will be put out there from uh, many of them. So looking forward to it. Yeah, and let me, uh, in case we have some non-technical uh, folks listening in, let me give kind of the, the product manager version of that. So Log4j is a Java logging framework, right? So the idea is your application will use Log4j to generate logs, which is kind of a transaction of what your product's doing. The framework is fairly sophisticated and it has hooks to do what's called lookups, right? So you can embed parameters that get replaced when the application is running and provide values to the log. But there's also a, a way for these lookups to go to other systems and pull information from other systems. And the vulnerability is all about the fact that data that's outside of your product and data that may be somewhere on your network or somewhere that you can call into can get incorporated into the log without any controls, right? And that's really the attack is that an attacker who has knows the right format or who knows how to download an attack tool can use this, essentially this hole to push that code to your server where it gets executed, right? So it's a... Uh, uh, it, it's all about kind of showing data that hasn't been verified and is not trusted, uh, but you don't really have controls over it coming into your logs. Right? So, so, so that's kind of what what the issue is all about. And you know, this this weekend, myself and I'm assuming every software company out there spent lots of time kind of sifting through all their stuff and just trying to identify number one, are they exposed? Number two, are applications they're using exposed? So, it, it, there's been a lot of scanning going on this weekend by many folks. Yeah, you know, uh, just to uh, add, add one more simple point, you know, the we are talking about this uh, particular vulnerability, wherein uh, the vulnerability in the, in the JNDI lookup feature of the log4j uh, library, you know, the background to this particular library, it might be very complex, but the exploitation of the vulnerability is very easy. You know, that is where uh, everybody is talking about it because it takes no time to exploit this particular vulnerability. It is very easy to exploit. It's just one simple header or one simple, uh, you know, line of uh, code which can exploit the uh, system or the server. So that is why we are all talking about it and uh, a chaotic environment has been created out of it. Okay. So this has a CVSS base score rating of 10. Of 10, yeah, which <laughs> is 10. the most Top anyone rating. can get. Yep, it's, it's the highest, right? Um, which means, okay. go ahead. Sorry, Alex. No, I was just going to say, and it's a 10 for two reasons, right? Number one, it's all over, right? Most applications will have exposure to it. And like Niraj said, it's very easy to exploit, right? So it doesn't take lots of sophistication to exploit it. So therefore, you get a big score. Right, right. So as you said, Alex, too, many organizations probably spent the weekend diving into this. But, yep. um, and either if you have, there's still work to do, or if you haven't, jump on it now. So what should organizations be doing about it? And Niraj, if you don't mind leading us off there. Oh, uh, yeah. So, uh, you know, what we have been doing and, uh, you know, based on the experience, though there are uh, plenty of information in and around this particular uh, vulnerability and the fixes. However, uh, we, we need a very detailed, uh, you know, strategy to follow the uh, remediations or follow the mitigations around it. Okay, so I, I would say that we should... Uh, start exploring the uh, attack surface first. Okay, that what is the uh, attack surface for the particular organization or the products? Say, for example, there is an organization A, they need to find out that what all applications, what all products, what all endpoints are really affected with this particular vulnerability. So they need to have a list of all the endpoints. They need to have a list of all the uh, applications and all of their products which are really vulnerable to this particular, uh, you know, vulnerability, which is log4j. The, uh, uh, the, the version that we are talking about is 2.09 beta, starting from that to 2.14.1. If, if you are falling in between any of them, you are vulnerable. Okay, and uh, th there are uh, two components which we are talking about, the um, the uh, log4j2 uh, core and the log4j API, or th there are plenty of them uh, which are available. And if you are falling in any of them, you are vulnerable and you need to have a strategy wherein you 
go ahead and identify that these are the list of endpoints which I need to have. You need to have, you know, commercial scanners running, which has the plugins available for this particular CVE, CVE 20214428. And then you identify that whether you're actually getting hit uh, with any of this, this vulnerability from the uh, DNS perspective or from the RC perspective both. So these are some of the initial steps, you know, any of the organization I think uh, uh, should look at and should be doing. Okay, very good. Alex? Yeah, and I'd say, you know, definitely scan everything in your colos, scan everything you got up on AWS, whatever other cloud providers you may be using. So you got to look at everything that anybody can reach and make sure that you've assessed uh, impact there. Um, I'd say kind of even a step zero is just identify a point person. Uh, you know, if you look at any large company, you're going to have many VPs of engineering involved. You're going to have lots of developers involved. You're going to have, you know, marketing and Chances are your customer success managers are getting calls from your customers. So have a point person, uh, figure out a plan, come up with some mechanism to track your assessment and put a spreadsheet together, put a Confluence site up, put you know whatever your company does, but come up with some sort of tracking document or website. Uh, make sure that you keep track of what you've scanned, which ones came up positive for hits to log4j or any of the, uh, you know, the frameworks that include log4j. Uh, make sure that you've got people's names assigned who are responsible for those products so that they're going to be the ones building their remediation plans. Um, and make sure that you are uh, understanding everything that's out there, right? You may have multiple versions of a particular application uh, deployed to customers if it's an on-prem product. Uh, make sure you scan all the way back to whatever is deployed, right? Chances are you may have different versions of Log4j for different releases of your product. So don't just look at your latest release because chances are you got older versions out there. Um, I'd say, so, so Narash kind of talked about the, the outside perspective. I'll talk a little bit about the inside one. So what do you do for your code, right? How do you find out if your, your application's impacted, not necessarily your network? So hopefully you've got an SCA solution, so software composition analysis solution. Uh, if you have, great. If you've been scanning, go look at your results, right? Find uh, whatever Java applications you have. Uh, look for log4j dependencies. Uh, make sure that when you're scanning, you're scanning for both direct and transitive dependencies. Uh, you want to find anything that can result in log4j showing up in your application as it's built. So you want to look for things like log4j jar, log4j API, log4j core, all the elements of the framework. And typically, uh, an SCA scanner will pick those up. Uh, if you don't have an S if you haven't done SCA scans, there's lots of free scanners available. Uh, there's been some developed over the weekend. There are a lot of them available on GitHub. So just go go do a search. Uh, you know, key in log4j vulnerability scanner. There's been lots of things uh, developed quickly to, to just focus on that. Um, at a minimum, if you can't do any of that, run a grep across your entire Java code base, right? Look for log4j star.jar, log4j api star.jar, core.jar. Just basic, you know, do basic string lookups. It'll hit package manager files. If they're declared inside, it'll hit the actual jar files in your code base. So at a minimum, you'll get kind of a, a crude idea of where you may be exposed, and then you can put some more eyeballs on it. Um, I'd say the, the important thing to note, kind of, kind of a couple of things to keep in mind. Uh, number one, uh, I mentioned earlier, there's been lots of ports of Log4j. Since those ports are outside of Java, they're not impacted by this particular vulnerability. So keep your focus on Java, because that, that's where that, the, the Java uh, naming directory interface, JNDI, comes from. So you need a combination of that along with Log4j for the exploit. Um, and then number two, it appears at the moment that log4j 1.x hasn't impacted, but it, it, which is you know good news in this case, but it's also end of life and no longer supported. So if you're on log4j pre two, so on 1x platform, it's been end of date, uh, end of life since 2015. Uh, vulnerabilities are no longer being assessed or fixed for it. So even though you may not have been bitten by this one, chances are there's lots of others out there for it. So make sure that you upgrade to log4j uh, 2.15.0. Um, because that's the one that's actually already fixed this vulnerability. Now, if you can upgrade for whatever reason, there's been uh, several workarounds. I think there's three different ones that have been identified by Apache. So if you go to their website, to the Log4j site, there's a, a write-up of the vulnerability, and there's three different things you can do around configuration and rebuilding uh, the library, which can get you a workaround if you're not able to upgrade for whatever reason. All right, so, so that's kind of the technical side of it. Uh, the process side of it. So notify your customers, right? Let them know what you're doing. Um, don't leave them in the dark because they're getting calls from their customers who may be using your products throughout the supply chain. So notify your customers, tell them what steps you're taking, give them some estimates on when you'll have a concrete answer on which applications are impacted. 
what your remediation plans are, uh, when you'll be able to execute on them, when you're gonna be able to provide a patch, or if none of those are possible, then see if the workarounds apply to your product and patch your product or tell your customers how to do it uh, themselves. All right, so, so critically important. And you know, if you're not already continuously scanning for open source, you know, start doing that. Um, these things happen time to time and it makes life a lot easier if you can query a system that's got the data than if you have to go scramble and scan through you know, decades of code that's been developed. So I definitely invest in a continuous scanning process, both from open source side and, and other security tools. Uh, one more piece of uh, you know, advice just before we uh, you know, go to the next one. So uh, there has been a lot of uh, information floating around this vulnerability. So just a, just an advice is that you know uh, we, we need to really look at which advice or which recommendation is really uh, helping us because there are a lot of myths around the mitigation specifically the fix we all uh, we all know that if we upgrade to 2.15.1 we are all good but from the mitigation side of it we need to really uh, you know go ahead and look into the detail that what mitigation has been uh, suggested from many of the online sites or many of the online blogs Rather, I would say that go uh, only for the official and for the, you know, uh, well-known verified blogs, which can tell you the mitigation steps. That's, that's a good point, Niraj. I mean, already there's a lot out there, right? And it can become very confusing in terms of what you're reading and what your steps should be. So please verify those sources for sure, right? Um, Niraj, just very quickly before we close this out, like kind of tick it off, what, what, what other security tools, types of security tools should organizations be using? Which, what, what should, they, should they be looking at? Uh, there are a lot of tools. One is the SCA tool that uh, Alex already talked about. We have uh, other vulnerability management commercial tools also available. Okay, there are infrastructure uh, security tools which are available in the market. There, there are plenty of them. There's, uh, you know, there, there's no end to it we can mention n number of names but there are uh, plenty uh, of commercial tools available and they are very good in you know detecting this uh, particular vulnerability and most of it has already come with the plugins and the uh, you know plugins which which can go ahead and identify the uh, cv which is reported right now very good all right before and, uh, we... i guess oh, i'll, sorry, I'll close with uh, sorry Kendra. i'll just close with kind of one other thought is you know don't, don't waste a good crisis as they say right um you're gonna likely have to look through all your code here for this don't forget about the others you know look for old versions of open ssl look for you know components that have been associated with historical breaches uh every time you, you kind of go through this exercise of sifting through all your code don't forget about things that may have not been patched in the past right you're already going to be looking at all the files add a few more search terms and make sure that you're, you know, you're you're doing a good job cleaning these things up. Very good. Thank you, gentlemen. Appreciate it. Um, all good advice. Um, so we are going to, um, in this podcast, um, in the information that we provide you, we'll, I'm going to um, add all the relevant links um, to our blog, other relevant information that's out there, um, the, um, the, the NVD um, post as well. So um, look for that to all our listeners, look for that as well. And we'll be sure to come back with any updates um, on the Log4j vulnerability as needed um, if it's required. And we hope this has provided the right amount of information for for um, our listeners um, to mitigate, to build a remediation plan, as well as minimize the risk. So again, thank you both for, for being here today. Thank you Thanks, very much, Kendra. Kendra. Okay, Take to care. our thank listeners. You, yep, to our listeners, Thanks, thank you. Have a great day. Empower the use of open source with software composition analysis from Revanera.